Hello and welcome. My name is Kai Zhuang, and uh, we're talking about what is computational thinking today. Computational thinking is an approach to problem solving that uses concepts and ideas from computer science in order to help us find solutions to a variety of life's problems. Computational thinking is not only the basis of computer programming, it can also be used to solve problems from all walks of life. Problems like from biology and medicine, from business and finance, even from the world of politics. You can use computational, bio, uh, computational thinking to figure out how to shoot the basketball better or how to deliver limited vaccine supplies to those who need it the most, or what we call the high-risk group. Computational thinking has four essential elements or aspects. Decomposition, which is really about breaking more complex problems into smaller, easier to manage problems. Pattern recognition, which is really about looking for patterns and similarities. Abstraction, which is really about simplifying problem by uh, taking away details and making generalizations and building simplified models. And finally, algorithm design, which is about creating step-by-step -step instructions to solve problems. So let's consider an example of how this works. We'll take vaccination in Toronto, which is the city I'm from, as an example. So this is during early pandemic, we had limited vaccine supplies, and we want to figure out how to deliver this limited vaccine supply to those who need it the most. And that's, again, the high-risk group. So with the composition, we'll break a more complex problem of how to deliver vaccines to those who need it into three simpler, easier to manage problems. Um, who is or who are the high risk people? Who is the high risk group? This is a human problem. Uh, what is the procedure for vaccine delivery? This is a technical or process problem. And finally, what are the costs involved, which is a financial problem. So we took a more complex problem into three simpler pro problems uh, in with different perspectives, human process, human, process, and financial. With pattern recognition, we see that there's, there are 3 million people in Toronto. This is a really unwieldy number, and then we simply can't do case-by-case, uh, case, person by person. Each of us have di very different background perspectives, beliefs, and uh, lived experiences. So we look for similarities and trends. And uh, let's say, hypothetically, we can break down people in Toronto into five demographic groups. And, and because they have similarity in their patterns. So yellow, A, blue, B, green, C, purple, D, and brown, E. And follow that, we can use abstraction to make some generalization about these groups. So um, we can generalize to say that group A and group C are more likely to be high risk, and, uh, and that we can also make some generalization about vaccine hesitancy. So we can say group A are likely to be vaccine hesitant, and group C are more likely to be open to vaccine. We know that we're making generalizations here, but it really help us manage an otherwise unmanageable problem. Then finally, with algorithm design, we create a step-by-step -step strategy to figure out how to do this. So whenever we have a person, we'll kind of run through this algorithm. If this person belongs to blue, brown, or purple group, uh, they have to mask up and wait. Otherwise, um, if they're of the green group, they're already open to vaccines. Let's get them vaccinated. If they're from the yellow group, then uh, maybe we have to do some education informing campaign, and maybe then they will be open to get vaccinated. I want to make one clarification is that computational thinking is not thinking like computers. Tools do not think, people do. Computational thinking is more like thinking like computer scientists. That said, computers are powerful tools for repeating simple tasks very, very fast. So we can use computational thinking to generate uh, solution strategies. And finally, what, pass these solution strategies to computers and let computers do the heavy lifting. Finally, I want to say that 
computational thinking is one of many overlapping and complementary approaches to problem solving. Other approaches include design thinking, systems thinking, and there are many. And we need all of these different approaches and different perspectives if we want to grapple with the complex challenges presented to all of us in this brave new world so we can together create a thriving world for all. Thank you very much.